and welcome, everyone, to Good Old Rocky Talk, a Vol Society podcast. I'm your host, Brad, here with my partners, the Davids. We're glad you're listening wherever you are. This is Good Old Rocky Talk. Welcome back, everyone, to Season 3, Episode 3 of Good Old Rocky Talk. Well, it's Week 3, baby. The balls are 2-0. and We're ranked number 7 in the country. And our defense was putting on a show in Charlotte. The Vols will be back in Neyland this Saturday, playing another scrimmage, if you will, with Kent State. Kickoff set for 7.45 p.m. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, Brad Frank. I sound terrible tonight, dealing with the COVID, so excuse me. But I'm here with my partners, David Dees and David Morrison. Guys, how we doing? Doing well, Brad. Uh, it's good to be with y'all this weekend in Charlotte. Uh, had some good times catching up and uh, watched an awesome football game Saturday night. What a game. David Dees, you have a good time in Charlotte? I had a great time in Charlotte. I thought uh, Tennessee fans showed up, showed out, and uh, there was, a, as expected, a large contingent of Tennessee Orange there. And uh, it was a great night for Tennessee football. It was a celebration. Uh, of Tennessee football in a neutral environment. A lot of red, a lot of orange. And, uh, but there was more we orange. Yeah. There were more orange in the stands, which I loved. I would say, am I right or wrong on this? I would say there was at least a 60-40 Tennessee orange in the in the stands. Yes or no? Or was it a little closer? Yeah, I, think I give Tennessee a slight edge there. Yeah, probably 55-45, 60-40, okay. something I'll like that. that. Uh, I, I was surprised how many NC State people were there. Honestly, they showed yeah. up. There was well, a lot we of are in the, we are but, in uh, their state. I expected them to show up. But what a what an environment, guys! That was unreal. I uh, I gotta tell you, I didn't think our D was gonna perform that, that well, but woo, wait, we look good. We look good. All right, guys, listen. Welcome back. Again, I'm apologizing for my voice. It is barely even a voice, if you want to call it that. I've been struggling with COVID, but hey, it's not going to, it's not going to keep me down. I got a show to, the show must go on. Let's put it that way. All right. Well, listen, guys, something very exciting I want to start with before we get to our first segment. I want to take a moment to uh, first recognize our first sponsor for today's episode. We now have a sponsor. That's right. We're moving on up. We're getting bigger. We're literally also on that note. I would say a day away from hitting 50,000 followers on our Facebook page. Guys, this is unbelievable. We love you guys. I want to thank you guys for following us. But let's go ahead and talk about our first sponsor here and give them a shout out uh, for this. Valley Hydraulics a proud sponsor of the Vol Society and the good old Rocky Talk podcast. Valley is your local fluid power specialist for industrial, commercial, and agriculture. For all your hydraulic cylinder repairs, hose repairs, hydraulic pumps, and valves, why don't you give Valley Hydraulics a call today? You can reach them at 423 599 one nine to speak with one of their expert fluid power specialists. Again, guys, that's four two three five nine nine zero one one nine. And be sure to tell them Vol Society sent you. Go Vols. How about that, Morrison? Happy to have Valley Hydraulics uh, on board. They're just right down the road from me, and I know they do a lot of good stuff in the community, and uh, yep. they'll definitely help you out as far as what you need in there. Where are they located, guys? 
They are located on uh, County Road 116 in Riceville, Tennessee. Yep. Uh, so it's it's literally five minutes from my location. Well, guys, there you go. I'm telling you, if you need help, I know that we know these guys personally, and I'm going to tell you, it's the best you're going to get. I promised you that. Very knowledgeable, very good people, do a great job with the community. So anyone in the surrounding areas, give them a call today. And again, we thank them for their sponsorship. All right, guys, let's go to our first segment, if you're good with that. All right. What did we learn this past week in college football? Guys, listen, this is a show that, I, you know, I love to talk. I'm going to have to preserve my voice somewhat today, so I'm going to rely on you guys to really take control of today's episode just to save the voice so that I can be back for next week. But I do want to say two things, and then I'll leave it to you guys to continue. I'll say this. What did I learn last week in college football? <laughs> Notre Dame and Michigan both fall. Mm. Morrison, go first. Yeah, that's the two big ones right there. Uh, you know, we, we talked uh, before the game uh, on our little pre-show on the uh, Facebook page. And, you know, we that was right when Notre Dame fell to Northern Illinois. And we knew earlier in the day Michigan lost to Texas. So we thought, man, the winner of this game, or, you know, really if Tennessee wins, I should say, they have a great shot of getting in the top 25. And uh, that certainly did happen. So, uh or top 25, top 10, I should say. And that certainly did happen, jumping up to number seven in the country. Uh, so a huge uh, huge accomplishment for the Vols as far as putting up that big number against uh, NC State. But, well, we uh, had a, not to cut you off, but we had a question mm-hmm. last week from one of our fans saying, would we yes, make we the top 10 if we beat NC State? And we all said, no, probably not. We'll be flirting with it, but not really. And look where we are, seven. Yep. It's just you never know what happens with college football nope. week in and week out. Um, but, yeah, that's kind of the headline there. Uh, kind of going into the SEC, uh, Arkansas uh, went to uh, Stillwater and gave a game to Oklahoma State and ended up falling in double overtime, 39-31. to 31. Uh, Man, Auburn just looked awful against California. I was yeah. not expecting that to happen. Uh, they've got some quarterback issues. Peyton Thorne is not the guy for Auburn, and uh, Hugh Freeze is going to have to find a way and turn that around quick because it could it could get ugly down on the plains. Um, and uh, man, Kentucky and South Carolina. Uh, South Carolina struggled in Week One to barely get a win over Old Dominion, and then they just com- did a complete 180 and just dominated Kentucky at their place, 31 to six. Um, you know, I and they got a big one coming up Saturday against LSU, which now like game day and everybody's kind of focusing on. I'm still not buying into South Carolina making a deep run this year, but it is what I'm it not is. Either. No way. No way. Um but you know, but and then on the other side, Kentucky, you know, uh, Brock Vandengriff, who was at Georgia for three years as a backup hit the transfer portal and went to Kentucky, just had uh, had probably one of the ugliest games I have ever seen in my life, just just could not get going at all. And, uh, you know, it, it's kind of a – I don't want to say a wide-open SEC, but definitely an interesting SEC uh, up for first couple of weeks. I think right now, as far as the four best teams go in the SEC, you'll have to put, obviously, us in there. Uh, Georgia's definitely in there. Ole Miss – and Texas. I mean, you could even make an argument uh, between Ole Miss and Alabama, but even Alabama for the second year in a row uh, got into a competitive game with South Florida, which makes sense because Alex Golish, the former Tennessee offensive coordinator, now the head coach of South Florida, uh, just cranked that up tempo offense and Alabama just cannot contain it. it. It's just what's happened in the last couple of years with South Florida losing. They just don't have the Jimmys and Joes down there in Tampa, but Tell you I what, want to chime in there. I, I think Alabama really has well, – that's one of the yeah. things I wanted to touch on. They really yeah. have some issues up front. I thought their offensive line got pushed around against South Florida. And as a Tennessee fan watching that, I think the offensive line is going to be a weakness for Alabama, mm. especially here in the early part of the season. I don't know if they can correct it. I don't know if they have the guys to correct it. But I look at that, and then I look at the way Tennessee's defensive line played – through two games this season and how they're able to rotate guys in and out. Uh, that's something to watch with Alabama is the physicality yeah. up front is just not there. They've got offensive line issues 
uh, here we sit in week two. So we'll Listen, see where I, they go I, with that. I but, agree with you. Yeah. Guys, what was that score at halftime, the Alabama game? I think it was 14-14, 16-14. I don't know. something close. We Guys. were at the game in Charlotte, so I'm just trying to remember. But yeah. it was pretty close. Guys, is that not mm-hmm. unreal? I mean, that's unbelievable. I know they, they, they ran away with it in the second half, but my gosh. Yeah, to clarify, it was uh, uh, yeah, fourteen. It was actually fourteen to six uh, at the half wow. Alabama lead. But you know, South Florida closed it in in the third quarter, made it fourteen thirteen, and then the fourth quarter is when Alabama just opened it up. But yeah, uh, like D says, uh, Alabama seems like they got old line problems, and you know, we'll see what happens third Saturday in October when Bama comes to our place. Yeah, I'm starting to. You know, I said that was going to be the one loss we get this year is Alabama. As you all know, by now I said we're going to go and beat Georgia this year. But, I mean, it makes you wonder now, right? I'm shocked by that Bama score at halftime. Like Where we sit today, if Tennessee does what they're supposed to do. We should win that game. They'll be favored at home against Alabama. Yes. You know, for the first time in a while, they won't be a dog against Alabama. I agree. I agree. And, you know, and we'll find out more as the weeks go on. But what our defense is doing right now, you know, we're – Everyone says, oh, Josh Heupel's known for this offense, right? Offense, offense, offense. My God, our defense, guys. They are unbelievable right now. They're dominating. It's unbelievable. So it should be very exciting to see what happens over the next few weeks. All right, that's good. Um, Let's go to our next segment, unless you guys have anything else you want to mention. Good? All right, let's go to our next segment. Let's get into this and talk about uh, our thoughts on the Tennessee game. As you know, the three amigos were there in attendance. By the way, we went live for 40 minutes pregame before the show. God, we had, I think that's had almost 60,000, if not more, views. That was crazy. Guys, I wish I could go to every game and do this for you guys. It looks like you enjoyed that. But anyways, thank you guys for following us. And again, if you're not following us on our social media platform, it's Vol Society, V-O-L Society. Be sure to go on there, give us a follow on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, wherever you are. Um, but yeah, that was what a game that was. Um, I think we all expected, you know, all of our predictions were fairly somewhat similar, close. Um, they won. But did we think the defense would show out like they did? And maybe you guys did. I didn't think we'd show out that good. David Dees. Yeah, I mean. You didn't know really what you were getting with NC State going into that one. I watched them struggle up front against Western Carolina in the first week uh, where they really, on both sides of the ball, but especially the offensive line, they really struggled getting a push up front. And so I thought Tennessee really had a chance to expose them there. But I think just what's been so oppressive, you touched on it just a couple of seconds ago, is just Tennessee's ability to rotate guys in and out on that defensive line yeah. They're overwhelming teams. They've all, their average guy, I think they played 20 snaps. Nobody played more than, I think, 22 and a half was the most number of snaps. That was Dominic Bailey. God, and then the rest of the defensive line averaged around 20 snaps a game. They kept those guys fresh. Unbelievable. And they leaned on NC State the whole night. Uh, the interior pass rush was there. Omar Norman Lott, uh, Amari Thomas, those guys getting back there into the backfield. It was just impressive to watch. They they You could tell NC State was really concerned. Um, they they kind of tailor their game plan around getting the ball out quickly, trying to get quick hits um, to their guys out in the flat. They tried to get the ball out in like two seconds, you know what I mean? And sometimes it didn't matter. Um, so just the way Tennessee was able to keep those defensive linemen fresh, I think they had 15, tackle, 15 different guys with tackles for a loss. Wow. I mean, that's incredible. So if you're rolling that kind of depth out there along your D-line, that's a championship caliber defensive line. 100%. And I thought the linebackers played well. I thought the secondary played well. Those guys haven't been tested by an SEC offense or a high-powered offense yet. But if you've got a defensive line that can can roll guys in and out like that, it's going to be really hard for offenses to move the football against Tennessee this season. So well, that was super encouraging for me. 100%, 100%. And you could see it. I mean, I know you could see it on TV, but being at the game, you could really see this in person. You know, first quarter, you know, the game's a little close. And then second quarter, you know, you can start to see some of these guys getting tired. Third quarter, and then fourth quarter, it's just these guys were done. They could not keep up. Our defense was first, so fresh. The first possession of the game, NC State had the ball on offense, and Tennessee subbed in 15 players yes. on the first possession. Yes. 
I mean, you're right. This is this is what makes a team a powerhouse. And gosh, I'm telling you guys, if we keep these guys it's been healthy, amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's been amazing to see what Rodney Garner can do with these defensive linemen. But what's really impressive is you've got all those guys, all those bodies that want to play, right? They all want to get in the game. They all want to work hard and then get rewarded for it on Saturdays. They get guys in so often that I think it keeps players from jumping in the portal and leaving here, you know, to go somewhere else where they would, you know, potentially be in the two deep and have to sit. I think it's been a huge benefit for the way Tennessee has managed those guys on the defensive line to keep them all here and not lose them in the transfer portal. So that's so impressive. And the way they're working that out right now um, has really been a huge positive. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Morrison's shaking his head. I think he agrees as well. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I agree. It was just very impressive seeing uh, just that defensive line is just completely just bullied NC State throughout the whole game i mean in a good way but i mean just um, bullied them it was crazy you're really seeing that depth that we have pay off i mean you can and that's an nc state offensive line that returned four starters yeah they got a transfer that came over from notre dame and so they've they've got a left tackle that was supposed to be a preseason all-american watch player yeah i mean they've got guys that you know were supposed to be a pretty good line and tennessee just abused them Mm -hmm. totally abused them yeah, and, and switching sides, we'll talk about the offenses. Uh, we can go all night talking about this uh, defensive line, but you know, yeah. going on the offense, Nico did throw, did have his first two turnovers. Uh, the first interception he did throw um, looked like he just had a bad read. Um, so it like happens. Safety drop back into coverage, uh, and then the second one, which resulted in the pick six, uh, it got hit in the arm and it just floated in the air, and NC State took advantage of it, but. You know, that's like probably the only criticism of the game, but I thought Nico looked really good again. I was happy to see him have another solid game. Um, Dylan Sampson has to be the best running back in the SEC. I mean, God, I know he's leading. This guy's a beast. I mean, he's leading in every statistical yeah. category at this time, but Dylan Sampson, my goodness, I'm, I'm happy for him. And you know, he's, he's a competitor. We saw him last year even kind of, sitting behind a Jalen Wright, Jabari Small, he wanted to get into the game. And he knew, you know, where he was on the depth chart-wise at times. But, you know, most consistent running back, uh, I would say, uh, in the Josh Heupel era. Uh, you know, the wide receivers did fine. Uh, happy to see Miles Kitzelman get his first touchdown. Almost got two if that we didn't have a yeah. silly holding call yeah. um, on that play. Holson State's uh, found the end zone also. Um, just, just a solid Tennessee performance all the way around. And just did not let go, uh, didn't take their foot off the gas pedal one bit. And uh, and like I said, just uh, just a solid night on the offense. Special teams did fairly well, too. Max Gilbert, I think, was uh, – he had all six of his extra points, and uh, I think he missed one field goal late in the game. But still, yeah. uh, he's done a great job first two weeks of the season not kicking a uh, college football uh, field goal. See, no, I'll, season, I'll put so. it this way. In this the first team is couple very games, well coached right now. That's right. In the first couple of games, this grade you got to give them is an A so far. I know that the first game was a nobody. This game was supposed to be a closer game than what you know most people thought, and, and we totally obliterated them. But on all phases of the ball, I mean, we look really good. Yeah, Nico would yeah, love thought- to have a couple of those back, but he still had a solid game. Right? He recovered nicely. Still had a great game, but we're looking good. David Dees? Yeah, I was just going to say it. NC State runs that 3-3-5 defense, and I was interested yes. to see how Tennessee would handle it. At Central Florida, Heupel kind of struggled with it a little bit. Yep. Um, they tried to take away Tennessee being able to throw down the field on them, try to keep everything in front of them. And uh, I thought it was an interesting look for Nico to have to deal with. And I thought he handled it really well, and it was good to see him throw an interception or two and then have the poise to bounce back. Bounce right back. The way his defense is playing lights out and he can Mm -hmm. rely on his running game, the sky is the limit for that guy. And just to see him play, you know, kind of a C-plus, C-minus kind of game and to still win by 41 points, and he looked good doing it. Like, I mean, aside from those two picks, which are, you know, learning opportunities, he'll get better at. I just thought he looked so good out there. His his decision-making was really good for the most part. He looked, he looked more comfortable. And we said, you know, probably week four, week five is when he would really start getting into his groove here. And uh, yeah. if he can handle a 3-3-5 defense the way he did the other night, I just look forward to him getting to go against teams that are going to 
um, run more of a you know four three or a three four type of defense instead of that weird funky three three five where they got a bunch of defensive backs on the field. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm excited for him. I think he 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 had a learning experience in this game, and he's really going to bounce back. And you know his first true true road test is coming up at Oklahoma in two weeks, and that'll be the first time he's we'll see him as a starting quarterback in a true road environment, not a neutral site, not a bowl game. Yep. And I'm really excited to see how he handles it. But I think he can rely and lean on the playmakers he has around him um, to where, you know, they're going to be able to put up a lot of points in spite of him even throwing a couple of interceptions, which is encouraging. Yeah, well said. Orson, you got anything else you want to add about the game? No, nah, that's just uh, pretty much it. Like I said, just Tennessee went out there and took care of business. Uh yep. Just a great, just a great environment, and even uh, we'll give a shout out to the city of Charlotte and people that ran the uh, Duke's Mayo Classic. I thought they did a great job, bring a good hospitality for both teams there. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm not the biggest neutral site fan uh, overall, but that was I a good event. The home and home, but that was I a good event. Charlotte, yeah, Charlotte did a did a fine job as far as doing, uh, you know, what they did, and uh, yeah, good turn. Hey, we we'd be remiss if we didn't bring up the play of the game. Will Brooks oh, taking oh it God. 85 yards to the house, pick six. Pick six. All off season, even us, you know, we talked about it. Are we really going to be hey. okay with Will Brooks back there? It, and we'll see. Time will tell. But it was good to see the guy, the walk on, get his get his due and get a big play that really broke the game. I mean, that was a close ball game still. Total in the first momentum quarter. change. And when he had that interception, it took all the wind out of the NC State. Absolutely. The game. Well, I'll tell you so this. Shout out also- Will Brooks. Yeah, shout out to Will Brooks, and also it took the, it took the uh, the, you know, I, I was talking to myself today. I said, "Am I going to mention these people or not? Am I going to be the bigger, the bigger guy here and just ignore it?" But I, I, I can't help it. This is my podcast, and I'm going to say what I'm going to say. <laughs> we've talked what about talking bad. About? We've talked about fans. Which fan base is, you know, last year we talked about which is the worst fan base in in the SEC and all that. And we talked about Kentucky and some others and all that stuff. But I got to tell you, I, I encounter, see, what people don't know, if you're listening to this, we actually, our seats, although excellent seats, literally three rows back in the end zone, we were surrounded by NC State fans. I don't like to bash anybody, but I'm going to tell you right now, I was not a fan of these, of most of the fan base for NC State. They were obnoxious, and they were. Am I? Maybe it's just me, guys. David D's Morrison, you can you can chime in. But when but when the game started, they have these chants they're doing with the band, and they just seem cocky and running their mouths and talking bad about some of our players. And I remember looking over, and it got out of control. And I remember looking over the. To, to my colleagues here, and I said, let them get it out of them because I guarantee you come third quarter, they're going to be walking, walking away. And sure enough, they did. They started leaving the stadium in the third quarter. But guys, am I overreacting here or, or are they kind of snotty? Uh, the folks we were around were a little snobby, uh, a little pretentious. Oh. They seemed like a kind of group that would eat charcuterie boards at their tailgates. Now, before you say anything, oh, I, guarantee you I, love I love charcuterie. I love charcuterie great. as well. But I'm not eating at a tailgate party. No. No, uh, no, no, these people are just kind of your wine and cheese crowd type people. And, you know, they were in for a long night and I think they realized that pretty quickly. And once they did, they were pretty quiet, but, oh God. Uh, you know, we met some decent folks there. The, we did we meet met a couple a pitcher that played for NC state. John, shout out John Morelia, a uh, bullpen guy that just graduated from NC state, met him before the game. Super nice guy. Real Everybody nice. else though, from NC state, eh, not so much. Oh uh, gosh. I think their biggest cheer for the game was when that, that, uh, Kicking tea, retrieving dog, ran out there with the red oh, vest. Oh God! Got the tea and ran it back. I think that was their most excitement for the night. So I mean, uh, you know, they acted like that. No other dog. I'm sorry, but they. I mean, they cheered for that <laughs> dog like that dog won the Olympics. I what never seen anything I guess like it. Was a retriever, it. right? Just like a little retriever dog that had a red vest on. Let me it. tell you what, NC State fans, you come dog. on down to Tennessee, we'll show you some dogs and how they're trained. They can do more than just go pick <laughs> up a stick. I mean, that's essentially all that dog's doing. He's picking up a stick and running it back. It's called fetch. It's the oldest trick in the book, guys. Yeah. But they acted like, I mean, I just, good Lord. I got, let's move on. I don't want to bash them anymore. Anyways, we took care of business. That's all I know. And we weren't obnoxious at the game. No, we, we were not. We, I didn't yeah. think we were. 
<laughs> now, other people might disagree, but um, no, I didn't think we were. My favorite is after every score, you would turn around and look at the crowd behind you and hold your an- hands up. That's exactly right. <laughs> As if, are you impressed? <laughs> I would turn around. I wouldn't say a word. I had a stoic face, and I would hold both hands up in the air, and I would just look for Tennessee fans around me and just point to them like, we know. Yep. We know. And all the NC State fans would just look at me. You could tell they wanted to just punch me right in the face, but we all know that didn't happen. Anyways. Anyways, all in all, great night. Great night in Charlotte. Gosh, that was a blast. I really enjoyed it, guys. Uh, All right, let's go to our next segment, guys. Let's move on. Go to the mailbag section here for a little bit. Talk. Uh, let's bring up some of our fans and some of their questions and comments and all that good stuff. I took a few from Facebook. We'll read a few of these and uh, try to answer these the best we can. First, we'll go with our first question from Bill B. Bill B. from Athens, Tennessee. Bill B. from Athens, that Tennessee. <laughs> you ever heard of Athens, Tennessee, Morrison? It's the home of Valley Hydraulics. It is the home. That's right. Somewhat. Valley Hydraulics. Yeah. Athens, Tennessee. Uh, That's where these three is. amigos were. Uh, uh, well, I would say all three of us are born and raised there, but I don't think Dees was born there, but we all grew up there. Let's put it that we way. Did. All right. Born in Atlanta. And, and yep. we have to say home of the Cherokees. Home of the Mac men. That's it's not Mac Mick men. men. It's Mac men. It's Mac men, Cherokees. All right, Bill B. from Athens. It's great. I'll have, to, I'll have to research and find out which Bill B. this is, because us Athens folks, we should know everybody in that town. Uh, all right. So he asked, what do you think our chances are to get in the playoffs this year after the first two games? Bill B., it's a great question. I'm going to tell you right now, losing my voice is starting to hurt again. <clears throat> I'll be quick and let you and uh, Dees and Morrison – continue this but uh i'm gonna tell you this it's 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 hard to say just after these two games but based off of what i'm seeing on all three phases of the game that our balls are doing right now and what we're capable of and how deep we are and what these other teams are be, are doing right now i'd say our chances are extremely high in fact i would be willing to say God, I, I would throw, I would honestly throw 85, 90% chance that we're making the playoffs this year. That's just me where I'm standing. Uh, <clears throat> Morrison, real quick, what do you got? Yeah, I think it's very high at this point, especially with the conference that we're playing in right now. Um, yeah, you got, um, I mean, as far as like, you know, Georgia and Texas and Ole Miss, we mentioned that already in the show. I think they're definitely uh, up there. But, you know, Tennessee, like I said, the, the schedule is very well. Uh, laid out for us to pick up some big wins there. And, um, you know, the ACC looks like they're down this year. The Big 12 is kind of a just a wide-open shootout at this point. Uh, so, you know you're going to have those. But, like, those extra – what's what's the big key factor is those, those extra teams, the 5 through 11, because C12 is the group of six champion. That's – you know, Tennessee has a real good shot at landing one of those at-large spots at this point. Uh, and if the SEC continues to just play very well and get double-digit wins uh, as far as teams go and Tennessee's in the thick of that, yeah, you have to put them in there. Yeah. Uh, no doubt about it. Yeah. David, Deese? Yeah, I would just say coming into the year, I was thinking 10 and 2 is probably, you know, where you need to be to have a chance uh, coming out of the SEC. And I think – I mentioned it earlier. I think Georgia, if all things hold and there's no catastrophic injuries or anything, I think Tennessee will be favored in all their games except at Georgia. Yeah, uh, in November. So, you know, 10 and 2, 11 and 1 is kind of where this team is trending right now as you look yeah. around at the other teams on their schedule. And if they can land there, I think they'll get in. The bigger question to me is, yeah, obviously I want them to get in, but I would love to host a playoff game in Neyland. God, I awesome. think I think it's like the week of Christmas is the first round game this God. year. Can you imagine the week of Christmas, Neyland Stadium, hosting a playoff game, and you got a Penn State or a USC or an Oregon – or one of those teams rolling in here, that or Texas place rolling would in be here. Lit. Can you imagine? And so, if you're one of the top four teams, you don't you get a buy in the first round, and you right. don't get to play a home playoff game. 
the way right. it's currently formatted, which I don't think it'll stay that way forever because those teams are going to miss out on the revenue and the experience, and they're going to want to have a home right. playoff game as well. Right. So I think it'll eventually change. But, um, you know, if Tennessee's 11-1, and 10-2, does that put them in a position where they're, they're the road team in the playoffs or will they be a home team in the playoffs? So it'll be interesting to see how it all shakes out. But, yeah, I would say their odds are very good as where we sit today on September 12th of getting into the playoffs this season. Yeah. Yeah. Bill, I hope that answers your question. I mean, that's three highly positive uh, yeses that we're going to make the playoffs. Um, Obviously, we got a lot of football to play, but as of right now, the way it stands, we're on our way, buddy. We're on our way. Let's go to our next question from Wendy W. from Charleston, Tennessee. Wendy W. from Charleston, Tennessee. Home of the Mustangs. Home of the Mustangs. Home of the Mustangs. All right. Uh, Wendy W., she asks, will the Vols be ranked in the top five if they win this week against Kent State? It's a good question. Wendy, I personally don't think we're going to move the needle at all this week. If we do, maybe, maybe one spot, but we're playing Kent State. I don't know what the rest of the games look like this week, guys, but uh, David Dees, take it away. Uh, it's a great question, Wendy. It's it's really dependent on, obviously, Tennessee. Everybody thinks we're probably going to roll on Kent State. So it really depends on the games around us. Uh, for Alabama plays at Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. Um, that could be something interesting, possibly. Uh, you got Missouri, who's ranked behind us, I guess. And they, no, they're they're ahead of us. Number six. Yeah. They play against 24 Boston College. That's a good game. I'd put Missouri on upset alert for that one. Boston College has a good head coach. What time is that O'Brien. game? They've already beat Florida State this year, 1245 at Missouri. Hey, that's going to be an so interesting a, game, guys. Watch that it's game. It's a home game for Missouri, but I think Boston College, you know, yeah. we saw them beat Florida State a couple of weeks sure. ago. They controlled the line of scrimmage. They had a good running game. They've got a good quarterback, good defense. So a game to watch right there, guys. Yep. Yeah. Agree. Agree. And then it looks like uh, you got Ole Miss and Wake Forest. I, I would think Ole Miss would handle them pretty yeah. easily. Yeah. You got Georgia and Kentucky. And after Kentucky last week, I mean, yeah, that looks like it could be a 60 it'll, something to it'll be a blowout. nothing ball game. Yeah, it'll be a blowout. So really I think that's it. Um Texas has a home game against Texas San Antonio, so that should yeah. be a blowout. Um so yeah, Tennessee might have a chance to move up a couple of spots uh depending on what happens with Missouri and Alabama, but uh you know, they'll they'll get there. They'll get there. Next week will be the the time where Tennessee really gets to Yeah. You know, to go on the road and, and possibly pull out a win against Oklahoma would be a big deal. Yeah, so we're going to move the we'll needle see. next week. Yeah, if if we get the win. Yeah, uh, Morrison, do you, want, do you have anything to add or? No, I agree. Hundred percent. Everything yeah. D says. I don't yeah. see us moving up. I just think it. Uh, it kind of all depends on how that BC Mizzou game goes. That's yeah, about I think it. you're right. That's going to be the game to watch right there. I, mm-hmm. I really think that could be an upset. I yeah. really do. And uh, I, this doesn't really tie into uh, this uh, the top five, but uh, for those curious, Oklahoma plays Tulane at three thirty. So kind of right mm. after that, uh, Mizzou, uh, Mizzou BC game, you know, probably want to check yeah. out and see how Oklahoma does because our game is not till later on in the evening. Yeah, yeah which I, I would think say is, Mizzou and Oklahoma are both on upset alert this week. Yeah, I think I think those are the two games to be watching, guys. Uh, also, why is our game? Is that? Why are, why are we a seven forty five against Kent State? It's kind of bizarre. it's the new TV contract with ESPN. Oh God! Of course, it. of course it's an ESPN thing. I this don't even is wanna... the perfect game to take kids to, and they've got it at eight o'clock at night. So if you want to take your kid to the game, you're not. Well, it makes home sense, to, David Dees. Yeah. It's ESPN. That's um, that's this yeah. is what ESPN does. They make this, bad this decisions. This should be a noon, noon kickoff. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. All right. Uh, let's go to one more question, guys, before we call it a day. All right, let's go to Aaron D. Aaron D. from Maggie Valley, North Carolina. Wow, Aaron D. from Maggie Valley. Just came through Maggie Valley the other day on our way back from Charlotte. Yes, yes, you did. All right, Aaron D. He wants to know, hey. Past the Santa Claus place. That was not good. Oh, that's a scary. You see this guy that's got arrested, a fake Santa got arrested this week for Of course he did. Yeah. Of course he did. Stay away from Santa land is the the moral of the story. You got to watch those Santa Claus, especially the ones with the fake beards. They seem to be uh, the ones you got to watch out for. Don't don't go to Santa land. 
Oh, it's terrifying. All right. Aaron D. By the way, Christmas is a few months away, by the way. We're in September. We've got October, November, December. What are we, like three months away? Ho, ho, ho. Aaron D. From Maggie Valley, North Carolina. We almost went down a bad road there. It's scary. Once you get to Santa Land, there's no coming back. Ho, 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 ho. All right. Aaron, most important game on our schedule this year. Okay. Well, I'd say they all are because you want to win them all. But here's what I'm going to say, and you guys might be a little different on me on this. You might not be. I think, although there are many important games on our schedule, obviously, I truly believe the one coming up against Oklahoma to me, is the most important one for our volunteers. Why? It sets the tone for for everything, in my opinion. You win that game. What is that? You win that game, you're 4-0. Is that right? Yeah, 4-0. Coming off a big win. You get out of September undefeated. You get out of September undefeated. And you got all the momentum in the world. You, You lose that game, that changes things. So that's why, in my opinion, I'm going with that Oklahoma game. It's just the the game that's going to, in my opinion, decide our future for this season. Anyways, uh, David Dees, what's yours? What was the question again? I'm sorry. I'm still the, on Santa Land. Yeah. I said, oh, 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 man, you got to get that <laughs> out of your mind, David. A little distracted. Yeah. Most important game on our schedule this year for Santa. I'm just kidding. No Santa. Well, you know, I think we all looked at that Oklahoma game as a springboard game. It's your first SEC game. But when we came into this season, we thought Tennessee was going to be an underdog heading to Oklahoma. Oklahoma was going to have this, you know, Jackson Arnold's going to be rolling and their defense is going to be good and they're going to be scoring points. And they're just not that right now. Their defense has been good, but offensively they're kind of a train wreck. They've got a new coordinator. They've got a redshirt freshman quarterback who's struggling right now. He's not getting help. They've got injuries along their offensive line. Wide receivers are hurt. They've not been able to run the ball very effectively. So a lot of question marks there. So at this point, I think that's even though it's a road game and I want to see how Tennessee performs and especially Nico performs on the road, I think that's a game Tennessee should be able to go out and win. I don't think Oklahoma can score points with Tennessee in that one. So if you ask me week week one or before the season started, I'd say, yeah, it's definitely that Oklahoma game. But now where we are today – I no longer think that's probably the most important game. Yeah, it's a big deal if you lose it, but I think they're going to win it. And so now I look at kind of – I would have to go to the Alabama game at home. It's a chance for Josh Heupel in year four to get his second win over Alabama. I think it's a program-changing win to be able to win again in Neyland against Alabama, and it matters so much in the playoff race. Um, you got yeah. Florida the week before, and I hate to just bypass Florida, but they're down a little bit as well. So I just kind of feel like – that Alabama game is your chance to get a signature marquee win. Yeah. And so that way, if you do go to Georgia and you lose that game at Georgia, it's not a huge deal uh, because you already have that first win over Alabama. And I think right. that's a credibility win right. for Tennessee. So, But if you look outside of Georgia and Alabama, where's a credibility win at this point for Tennessee? Because Oklahoma is not what people thought they were going to be. It would still be a great win to go on the road and win there. But you know, really, Georgia and Alabama are the two games that Tennessee really has to prove themselves this year against top competition. Yeah. And I think because it's at home, that Alabama game is probably the most gettable for Tennessee. So I'm going to say Alabama. Wow. Okay. Okay. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Santa. Santa, get out of here right now. You're not welcome here. We love Santa, but just not the one at Santa Land. That's what we're talking about right now, boys and girls. He just tried to wreck our show. Nonsense. Morrison, better hurry up before Santa gets back in here. Exactly. Uh, no, no, I agree with uh, Dees. I think uh, right now at this point, I think it's Alabama. Yeah. Uh, I, I kind of same thing. You know, I thought Oklahoma definitely can be a springboard game. Uh, to launch us to a great season. But I think uh, Alabama, third Saturday in October, um, 
you know, this is the first year with Caleb DeBoer uh, as the head coach, making his first trip to Knoxville. Uh, we talked about the offensive line kind of having some issues the first couple of weeks, and I'm sure they may clear that up by the time we roll into our game. But, uh, you know, our defensive line is just playing – Top notch, probably the best we've seen in school history, um, and just you, you know, you you had that big moment two years ago where you thought you had a chance to beat Alabama, and you did. And now here we are, two years later, they're coming back to our place, and it just you you definitely kind of feel that confidence, and that yeah. would be just like a huge statement win, and also just a, a huge. Uh, a huge stamp of approval as far as your playoff resume goes. I like it. I like it. All right. I hope that answers your question, uh, Aaron. Great question, Aaron. What was a great question from Aaron D. Maggie Valley. All right, guys. Let's go to our final segment. Get these score predictions. I don't think we need to spend no more than probably 30 seconds on the score prediction unless something drastic and crazy and insane happens Saturday uh, against Kent State. But, you know, for fun, let's see who can get the close. Let's see who can get the closest here. And uh, I think I was the closest last that. week, right? Give it up for David Dees. He was 51, the closest. 52 20 was my prediction that ended up 51 10. So That's I didn't great. give the defense enough credit. Yeah. Yeah. I think David won that one. I was second, I think, and Morrison was third because he thought it was going to be a closer game. Morrison, what did you I say? said there would be a pick six. I said there would be a. I said there would be a pick six, and I said it was going to be Boo Carter. Boom. Turned out it was Will Brooks, but I'll take Will it. Will Brooks, baby. How about it? How about Will Brooks? Huh? How about it? Santa, what about it, Santa? What about it, Santa? Ho, ho, ho. Will Brooks. Merry Christmas. Will I think Brooks. Will, based on week week two, I think Will's been a very good boy this year. He'll get some good gifts in his presents. I guarantee uh, it. Presents under the tree this year from Santa. I guarantee it. Just don't go to Santa Land. Don't go to Santa Land. Not till we tell you it's okay to. <clears throat> All right. This has just gotten out of control. If you're listening and you work at Santa Land, we still love you guys. We just don't love what has happened in the news recently. There. <laughs> <laughs> That's a true story. I know we're laughing, but this is a true story. That's awful. This really yeah. happened. It's awful. The sick world thankfully, we live in. Thankfully, thankfully, he's behind bars. Good, as he should be. And if you're a little kid, that's not the real one. So you don't have to worry. The real one's in the North Pole right now, and he's making them gifts. He's getting ready. He's up there with them elves. He's, he's making them. I promise you. All right. What has happened? Did we turn into a, a Christmas podcast or something? This is outrageous behavior. Bad, bad Santa po- podcast. Gosh. All because of a, a breaking news story David D's had to share with us. Now we got Santa on here wishing us some ho ho hoes. Gosh. All right, guys. So I'm going 66 to 3. 66 to 3, Tennessee wins. Morrison, what's your prediction? I'm pretty close where you're at. I'm going 62-3 for the final. Ooh. I don't, I don't expect. Uh, it's, I, honestly, at this point, the kind of the reading up on Kent State, I think Chattanooga could make uh, a game with Kent State at this point. It wow. Could, this is just not a good team, not a yeah. very well coached team, and this is the uh, second of three road games that Kent State's got to go to. They already had a road trip to Pitt. They come to our place on Saturday. Then next Saturday, they got to turn around and go to Penn State. So they're collecting all them, uh, collected all those checks as from the from these big schools, but uh, it's not helping them build a good football team out there. You know, it's it's weird because they were in the third quarter with Pitt and they were only down like a touchdown. They were in that game late in the third quarter. Oh, and yeah. And Pitt ended up pulling away. Um, so very interesting. But, yeah, they weren't very good last year. I think they're coming off a 1-11 season, if I'm not mistaken. And then the year before that, they were just about as bad. Um, so not a very good football team, one that Tennessee should roll. I think they have a very – Bad offensive line, which, as you've seen, it gets this defensive line. Good Lord help us, you know. They're going to have a hard time. They're going to be 
going to be in for a rough day. So, Brad, you won't believe this. I was right where you were. I was saying 66 to 3. Wow. I'll adjust my prediction just for the sake of uh, you hear that, folks? humoring this. I'm going to say I'm going to say 65 to nothing. Tennessee wins it. Wow. Nothing. Shut out. Shut out. Again, it's Kent State week, so go that's balls, right. beat Kent State. That's really the that's really it. Now listen, guys, I want to thank you once again for joining us. Now, please be sure to check out David Morrison if you're not. David Morrison, every is it Wednesday night, David Morrison, you do this show? Yeah, we're going Wednesday night this season. Uh, Wednesday night, 8 o'clock Eastern Time, 7 o'clock Central on our yep. Vol Society social media pages. Vol Society Live, your chance to be heard. Leave your comments, questions, or even give you a shout-out on the show. That's Vol right. Vol Society Live. It's been a great show. David's on there live. That's your time to ask questions, to give shout-outs. We will talk about it with you live. David Morrison with Vol Society Live on our social media platforms every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern. All right, guys, from all of us here at Good Old Rocky Talk, good night, go Vols, and let's beat Kent State Saturday night. Let's beat the Golden Flashes. The Golden Flashes.